Today, I will talk about the PDCA cycle we run to improve line news recommendation engine. This is the agenda. I will first briefly introduce myself and talk about what is line news. Then I will walk you through some of the actual case studies of our cyclical improvement process using A-B testing. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Yoshitaka Suzuki. Thank you for joining. I am a data analyst and I'm, I'm in charge of line news and line search. This session is about line news, so let me first briefly walk you through what is line news. On line app, tapping the second tab from the right will take you to line news page. This is what we call news tab, the main page for line news. Also, we have digest news, which is sent from line news official account to its followers three times a day. By reading the digest news articles, you can keep on top of what happened in a day. I encourage you to subscribe to the line news official account if you haven't. These stats represent the scale of Line News service. Over the past seven years since its service launch, we have grown remarkably. 17.5 billion monthly page views with 75 million monthly use users. More than 8,000 news articles are produced daily, including ones provided by media partners. One important driver for the Line News growth is personalized content. Among 75 million monthly users, everyone has different interests, such as entertainment news, sports updates, or cooking and recipe and whatnot. So one of our major challenges is how we respond to different needs of different users. One solution we have focused on is recommendation feature. The top area in the news tab is a personalized recommendation area called For You. For You offers personalized articles for each user based on what articles they read or actions they took in the line news section. Today, I will delve into the details of how we have improved this For You section. This graph shows trends of monthly clicks in For You from January 2019. It's been growing significantly thanks to continuous improvements on UI, UX, and recommendation engine logic by running a series of A-B tests. Now, how we are running A-B testing and PDCA cycle. I will start with the overview of the A-B testing we run, followed by how we design the test, analyze the results to get actionable insights. For those who have done A-B testing before or doing A-B testing now, this, sounds, this should sound all too familiar to you. A-B testing doesn't usually go well. There could be many different reasons behind it. From what I have experienced, there are two aspects to it. First, people didn't know why they were running an A-B test. A-B testing slips into the end in itself with no clear objective. Second, people couldn't find actionable insights from test results. This often happens when a test didn't end up being in line with your initial expectation. Some of you are not a business planner or analyst, maybe you are a developer, then you might have wondered what follow-up actions were taken after the A-B test on the product you developed. In my talk, I will share our experiences and key points we've learned and hope this talk will help you run a better test and improve your service. This is the scope of today's talk. A typical flow of A-B testing starts with planning followed by design and development before running an A-B testing, and then you analyze the results. In this talk, I will only focus on the beginning and the end of the process, which are planning and analysis and follow-up actions. To set the stage, here is the overview of the A-B testing we conducted. It's very simple. The variables we compared were two recommendation engines. The one is the existing recommendation engine, and the other is a newly implemented recommendation engine. We assigned the same number of users to both variables. These two questions are what we always ask ourselves in the very beginning. The first one is, what is the purpose of the A-B testing? We always make sure to verbalize and visualize the purpose of a test. This sounds 
so obvious to some of you, but sometimes people forget about this fundamental process before moving on. The other one, which will become clear once the purpose is agreed on, that is how to measure the effect of an A-B test. In our case, we decided on this purpose. We set two major goals here. The first goal is for 4U, the main target of the A-B testing this time, and the second goal is for line new service overall. The goal for 4U was to get users to read more articles in the 4U section. 4U basically shows articles that match each user's interest, so we believe that the more articles users click, the more uh, satisfied they are. The other goal is something people typically overlook, which is more broad service level goal. Line news main quantitative KGIs include page views and ad revenues. It is possible that even though a result might be positive for a targeted component for you in this case, there may be an unexpected negative impact on overall service performance. For example, when users spend so much time on for you while spending less on other components, which could undermine the overall service KPIs. That is why we always keep tabs on the overall service performance as well. Another important aspect of the planning stage is to decide how to measure effectiveness. Once the purpose of an A-B testing is defined, you will translate that into developing quantitative matrix to look at. Our KPIs for 4U were click counts, impressions, and CDR, and the overall service KPIs are also threefold. The first is page view per session, which measures how many articles were read per visit. The second was article impressions of the entire line news, and the third was the total ad revenues. To be honest, there were other detailed metrics we monitored, but I just gave you the major ones here. Let me sidetrack a little bit to touch upon how we monitor KPIs during A-B testing. Line News use Tableau and monitor each KPI for a control group and treatment group daily and we plot actual values and lift rates of treatment group over control onto a graph. Just to note, big fluctuations you see on the graphs are from enhancements we made while running the A-B testing, such as changes to UI or new features added to treatment group. This is the final result of the A-B testing we did this time. The results showed that all KPIs improved for the treatment group who used a new recommendation engine. For 4U, we got 13% lift to clicks, and KPIs for the entire service also increased, so the results were in line with our expectations. Then, we were about to apply the new recommendation engine to all users, but there was one problem. Some of the internal members who were assigned to the treatment group gave us concerning qualitative feedback. They told us that in the new recommendation engine, they felt they were served more provocative stories like celebrity scandals, which were less relevant to their personal interests. It is not that these news articles are bad, but since we are talking about the most visible area in the news tab, we had to assess these feedback very carefully. Here is the summary of the A-B test we did. The qualitative, a quantitative matrix we defined in advance produced positive results, while qualitative feedback was somewhat concerning. But let's step back a little bit and think on it. Qualitative results did suggest some issues, but are they really a problem? Qualitative feedback we received from our internal members were subjective, so we don't know whether general users would feel the same. So we decided to vet further to find out more about the impact. This is the additional analysis we conducted. 
Our hypothesis was that for the treatment group, some features appeared so strong that they caused unintended deviations on the recommended articles. So we looked into a possibility that a certain category of articles might have disproportionately exposed to control group or treatment group. In other words, exposure of niche categories might have declined. Here is the results. We looked at the impression data by a new dimension, categories of ad articles. In this graph, control and treatment groups' impressions are broken down by gender. As a result, impressions of male treatment group increased noticeably in the entertainment category, like you see on the left bottom of this graph. It tells us that entertainment articles were more exposed to male users in treatment group compared to control group. Now it became apparent that the new recommendation engine is more likely to expose entertainment news stories to male users than our existing engine. But the real question is whether that is really a problem or not. Maybe these male users actually gravitated towards entertainment news stories. We decided to delve into it in our next A-B testing. So the follow-up action was to figure out whether removing unintended deviation would help drive click counts and enhance user satisfaction. To find that out, we performed several additional A-B tests. These are just an example. We tested with additional features to smooth out category deviations. Also, we tested with another features to bring out long-term interest of individual users. These were examples of the follow-up actions driven by the insights we gained from the first A-B test. Lastly, here is the summary of my talk. I focused on what I believe are the key elements of running an A-B test and the importance of figuring out what you want to do next. To recap, the key elements to always keep in mind when I design an A-B test are twofold. First, verbalize and visualize the purpose of an A-B test. That is the first critical point. Second point often slips people's mind. Even when you upgrade only a subset of a service, always aim for an overall optimization with appropriate KPIs in place. Then there are few key, few key points in deciding follow-up actions after A-B test. First, be aware that results could turn out to be an opposite of what you initially expected. Just like in our case, qualitative feedback and people's subjective opinions were good examples. Second, try to quantif quantify qualitative and subjective feedback. That means stay organized with a clear picture of what has happened in the test, verbalize the results, and try to analyze quantitatively. In our case, we used article categories as another dimension to revisit the data. I recommend you to always have different dimensions at hand for looking at data from different perspectives. Today, I talked about the key points for running a successful A-B testing, including importance of follow-up analysis which I learned from my own experience at Line News. I would be happy if this talk would help you improve your service or product. That's all. Thank you very much.